Hi, my name is Linda Klein. This presentation is for Grand Canyon University Nursing 428 Concepts in Community and Public Health. The identification of focus is on primary prevention or health promotion for the effects of obesity and being overweight, advantages to weight loss and physical activity. I will begin by explaining my plan and goal. I will engage the audience with questions and pictures and Q&A after the presentation. The plan, in nursing diagnosis, nutrition imbalance more than body requirements, I will assess readiness and use therapeutic communication to discuss why the change is needed for longevity and prevention of disease. I will educate about healthy food choices, the benefits of staying active and the importance of weight loss. I will set the plan into action by educating how and why, offering support, explaining expectations, evaluating barriers, providing feedback, and offering reassurance and praise. The goal, audience will be able to identify food choices, exercise, and name benefits of weight loss, healthy eating, and staying active. Creativity, engaging with the audience will help motivate and ensure commitment to the material. Involving the patient and verbalizing education ensures understanding of content. Chandar 2019 states, teach back is a way of confirming if patients understood the health information and advice given by the healthcare provider by asking them to state in their own words what they need to know about their own health. The epidemiological rationale of the effects of obesity and being overweight Almost one-third children and two-thirds adults in the U.S. are overweight and obese, according to the Institute of Medicine in 2012. Causes of high rates of obesity can be attributed to trends in environmental influences on physical activity and food intake. This is why it is important to educate people about this topic. The IOM 2012 states hypertension is the largest risk from obesity and affects one-third adults older than the age 20, and affects more than 55% adults older than the age 55. Together, hypertension, coronary artery disease, heart failure, and stroke account for 37 to 39% women and men aged 40 to 59, and 72 to 73% women and men aged 60 to 79. 8% of adults have diagnosis of type 2 diabetes, 3% are undiagnosed, and 37% have prediabetes, according to Roger and others, 2011. Obese children and adolescents suffer from an array of obesity-related comorbidities, such as sleep apnea, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, liver disease, and orthopedic problems, and may contribute to shorter lifespans. Obese adolescents are subject to greater number of absences from school, teasing, stereotypical encounters, and prone to depression, low self-esteem, and suicidal thoughts. There are many factors that contribute to readiness for learning. Beliefs, pain, fear, fatigue, anxiety, language barrier, level of education, religion, perception of healthcare providers, reason for seeing a provider, use of health promotion or lack thereof, lack of support, preference to teaching techniques, whether it be audiovisual, lecture, or group discussion, background, skills, and ability. So interviewing patients to understand their learning styles and barriers, whether it's environmental, physical, or emotional, and what motivates them to learn is crucial to success. The learning theory I used was the change model theory. According to Faulkner in 2018, it has three stages. Stage one, unfreeze, stage two, change, and stage three, the refreeze. The unfreeze is the preparation stage or why the change is needed. The change stage is the action stage and the refreeze stage is setting expectations and support during change, evaluating barriers, feedback, reassurance, and praise. Using leading health indicators by Healthy People 2020 for the nursing diagnosis, nutrition and balance more than body requirements, I applied the objective NWS-9 reduce the proportion of adults who are obese. Healthy People 2020 state healthful eating and regular physical activity can help people achieve and maintain a healthy weight, reduce the risk of heart disease and stroke, reduce 
the risk of certain forms of cancer, strengthen bones, muscles, and joints, and improve mood and energy level. There are a number of factors that affect a person's ability to eat a healthful diet, stay physically active, or achieve and maintain a healthy weight. But in many communities, the ability to buy fresh fruits and vegetables are scarce or non-existent, and safe or appealing places to be active are minimal or non-existent as well. These environmental factors are compounded by gender, age, race, ethnicity, education level, socioeconomic status, and disability status, which influence physical activity, nutrition, and obesity. Addressing these factors is critically important to improving nutrition and activity levels of all Americans. Only then will progress be made against the nation's obesity epidemic and cascading impact on health, according to Healthy People 2020. The Alma Ada Health for All Global Initiative notes that health, which is a state of complete mental, physical, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity, is a fundamental human right and that the attainment of the highest possible level of health is most important worldwide, worldwide social goal. Gilliam, 2008. Similarly, Healthy People 2020 Objective NWS9, Reduce the Proportion of Adults Who Are Obese Initiative, is also meeting Alma Ada's goal of attempting to attain the highest possible level of health. Both initiatives state for optimal health, there has to be a complete physical, mental, and social well-being. <clears throat> Objectives and outcomes. For healthy foods, I will educate using choose my, plate, choose my Plate picture showing required essential foods. Required are one to two cups a day of fruit, one to three cups a day of vegetables, three to eight ounces of grains per day, of which 50% should be whole grains, two to three cups of dairy per day, and two to 6.5 ounces of protein a day. For the outcome, the audience will be able to name one healthy food for each of the five food groups. To evaluate the learning of objectives, was the audience able to name essential foods and amounts in the groups, and did they have any questions? Exercise. <clears throat> American Heart Association recommends two and a half hours of heart pumping physical activity per week. Types of exercise are hiking uphill or with a heavy backpack, running, swimming laps, aerobic dancing, heavy yard work like continuous digging or hoeing, singles tennis, cycling 10 miles per hour or faster, and jumping rope. Outcome. I would ask the audience to name three types of exercise recommended by the American Heart Association. The way to evaluate the learning of objectives, was the audience able to name three types of exercise recommended by the AHA? Health benefits of exercise recommended by the AHA include lower risk of heart disease, stroke, type two diabetes, high blood pressure, dementia and Alzheimer's, several types of cancer and some complications of pregnancy. Better sleep including including improvements in insomnia and obstructive sleep apnea, improved cognition, including memory and attention and processing speeds, less weight gain, obesity and related chronic health conditions, better bone health and balance with less risk of injury from falls, fewer symptoms of depression and anxiety, better quality of life and sense of overall well-being. For outcome, I would ask the audience to verbalize three health benefits of exercise. The way to evaluate the learning of objective, was the audience able to name three health benefits? Health risk examples include high blood pressure, type two diabetes, stroke, coronary heart disease, sleep apnea, gallbladder disease, high LDL and low HDL cholesterols, high triglycerides, death and osteoarthritis. For assessing the outcome of education, I would ask the audience to name two health risks according to the CDC associated with obesity and being overweight. <clears throat> the way to evaluate the learning of objective was the audience able to name two health risks. Actions to improve health. Heart.org recommends creating a food diary with intake time, type, and amount of food. For assessing the outcome of the objective, 
I would ask the audience to name three actions one can do to make improvements in health and weight loss. The way to evaluate the learning of objective was the audience able to name three actions they can do to make improvements in health and weight loss. <clears throat> For the planned evaluation of the goal, goal I will reevaluate in one week to monitor progress, review weight, and assess the plan of care. I would review the exercise routine, compliance, and encourage walking. Changing sedentary lifestyle will increase self-esteem, burn calories, and increase energy levels. For planned overall evaluation of the lesson, I would assess, was the patient able to verbalize the goals? Were they able to state one food from each of the healthy food groups, name three types of recommended exercise, name three things they could do to improve health and weight loss, verbalize two factors contributing <clears throat> to excess weight, and verbalize three outside interests to stay active and healthy. Potential barriers include education level, language barriers such as Spanish speak speaking, individuals not available for interview or assessment. For language barriers, I would arrange for a translator if needed. For barriers of education, I would assess the level of education and rethink my approach to meet their needs. For individuals not home or unavailable, I will make several attempts to connect, obtaining more than one phone number at the initial time of contact. Additionally, I will note the patient's abilities. Is it realistic for the patient to be able to walk or exercise? Do they have any restrictions that would prevent them from pursuing this goal? Do they have support at home? Therapeutic communication was used during this interview. This concludes my presentation. Thank you.